A multi-episode storyline begins this week on the CBS drama Clarice. And joining me now is the amazing Jen Richards, who will guest star as a character named Julia. Okay, Jen, so you started off as a consultant on the show, but ended up actually being cast in the show. How did all of that come about? Uh, that's correct. I was asked to be a consultant uh, through the LGBT media advocacy organization, GLAAD, and, and got to know the showrunners, was brought in to oversee the creation of a character in her arc, and uh, in theory, to oversee the casting of the character as well, and, and then was surprised and delighted when they turned around and, and asked me to perform the role. I, I've been acting since I was about six months old, but when I came out to Hollywood around six years ago, there really wasn't a place for trans people in the industry, and so a lot of my work kind of shifted to advocacy and, and hopes that the generation behind me uh, would get to take for granted that trans people were part of Hollywood. And so I'm always uh, very grateful and, and delighted uh, when that kind of advocacy work actually gives me an opportunity to do what I came out here to do in the first place. And you've been a trailblazer in that. You've really done a great job of trying to get more diversity in Hollywood, especially with the trans community. That's correct. Um, I wish I didn't have to blaze that trail. I wish I could, uh, you know, just focus on on uh, the acting and the writing. Uh, but I'm also uh, really grateful I've had an opportunity uh, to get to do that kind of advocacy work and and change a lot of minds in Hollywood, both through you know my meetings and interactions there, and also through the uh, documentary Disclosure, which is on Netflix and chronicles the entire history of of trans representation in film and television. And I didn't expect to see much so much change in my lifetime and. And uh, it's, it's really deeply gratifying to see so many trans people on television today. Yeah, no, it's actually very, very cool. Uh, parts of the storyline in Clarice center actually around how Buffalo Bill's character from Silence of the Lambs affected the trans community. Now, this movie came out 30 years ago. I'd like to think we've evolved since then. But, you know, that <laughs> perception was actually something you dealt with uh, within your own journey. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, that's correct. About 10 years ago, when I was on the eve of my own transition, I started kind of checking in with some colleagues and friends uh, to see if I would still have friends and still have a job afterwards, which you, you can't take for granted and we couldn't take for granted 10 years ago. And one of my colleagues, after I disclosed that, looked to me and said, you mean like Buffalo Bill? Uh, and that was her only reference. That was her only knowledge of trans people was the character of Buffalo Bill. And that's not exactly the image you want in your friends' minds when you're saying something really personal and vulnerable uh, about yourself. And I, I told that story in the documentary disclosure and the showrunners of the show uh, saw that and decided that, that um, they had a, a moral responsibility to put that right and also create something you know, better for the next generation of, of, of audiences. Okay, so we have that storyline, but there's so much more to Julia. You know, there's other things because yes. she's also involved in kind of being a whistleblower. And she's described as a character who wants to do the right thing. So tell me a little bit about her character and sort of how it plays into the show. That to me is what's most exciting about this series arc. I think traditionally, uh, particularly when it comes to network television, whenever someone with a marginalized identity shows up, it's often just for one episode so that the protagonist can learn some kind of moral lesson and then we never see that person and again. What really excited me about Clarice is that uh, the character of Julie gets to have a three episode arc. And while her transness is part of who she is, it's not all of who she is. Um, she is primarily involved in this story because of her, uh, her skill and her job as an accountant and she has to make a big decision about whether she wants to risk a pretty good life that she's built for herself but that depends upon a certain degree of secrecy upon her uh, colleagues not knowing that she's trans so she has to decide whether she wants to to stand up and risk everything to do what's right and in the process of doing so whether or not she wants to confront Clarice about Clarice's complicity within the world of Sansa Lambs uh, for helping create that link between uh, trans people and violence uh, through the identification of Buffalo Bill it, when in fact in real life and within the realm of Sansa Lambs trans people tend to be uh, victims of violence rather than perpetrators. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> this is yes, be a lot to a unpack. Lot to Sorry. For these three episodes. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. No, this is exciting. And I think it's great. I think it's going to be a really cool storyline. And hopefully they'll have you back maybe down the road or in season two. You never know. I would love that. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about San Francisco. Right before we started this interview, mm. you said you love the city. Do you come here often? I know you mentioned you filmed here uh, before. 
Yes, I, I, I've been there a few times, but uh, in particular, uh, the, the reboot of the show Tales of the City, uh, which is very closely linked you know, with San Francisco, uh, the titular city. Uh, I played the younger version of Olympia Dukakis's character, Anna Magical, a very iconic character that she pioneered. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got to play that character in 1966 in San Francisco. Uh, she worked at City Lights Bookstore in, in downtown San Francisco uh, and got to spend a few months in San Francisco filming and getting to know the city. City and, and the world and Armistead Maupin and Olympia Dukakis. Um, and I'm so thrilled I got the chance to meet her before she passed and, and got to be part of um, a really tremendous, wonderful legacy that she created. And it made me fall in love with the city. And I, I often fantasize about ending up there someday. <laughs> Well, we'd love to have you. And what a cool story. I didn't know that about your uh, connection to Olympia Dukakis. That's very cool. Yes, yes, it was really wonderful. Uh, they, you know, when it comes to trans representation, they were aware that uh, there was kind of a lost opportunity there uh, to have a cis actor play such a famous trans role, uh, a character that had been in print for, for many years. And when Netflix did the reboot a few years ago, they wanted to give an opportunity to a trans actor to play a younger version of that character. And so I got to work with Olympia in crafting, uh, crafting that character. It was really, truly an honor. Ah, that is so cool. All right. Well, that sounds amazing. I'll have to check that out as well as Clarice. Jen Richards, thank you so much. The multi-episode arc of Clarice begins airing Thursday, May 13th, right here on KPIX5. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.